वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग गंगाधर गुड मॉर्निंग प्रणेश विश्वकर्मा द्वारका पिंकी काव्या राज मार्थांड हिमांशु ओनम विनोद पाथ फाइंड आदित्य कवि षणमुखा प्रज्वल फैजल लेजेंड सांगवी सूर्या साइदलू कुलंडाई मारिया हिजाबी विनय अभिनया ऋषभ साथिया समीर भाग्या ऋषित कुमार ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू गुड मॉर्निंग संदीप सो शैल वी स्टार्ट द टुडे सेशन आर यू रेडी टू गिव आंसर्स ये गुड मॉर्निंग दनम्मा गुड मॉर्निंग यागा यस टेल मी आर यू रेडी शैल वी स्टार्ट द सेशन यस गुड मॉर्निंग पिंकी मनोज Yes. Good morning, Hena. So, first topic is about summit concludes. Modi calls for virtual review meet in November. So, this article is talking about our G20 summit. So, what you have to focus as usual, you have to focus on facts regarding this G20. And here you can get a main related question. Right, so what are the key highlights? And you can also get a question like, what is the role played by India? Because India is having presidentship now, and by December thirty first, we are going to end this pres uh, presidentship, and the presidentship will be shifted to Brazil. Okay, you have to see in this one year what is the role played by India, and what are the some key highlights of this summit that you have to remember. and one more important area here is what are the challenges of this g20 so these are the some important areas that you have to remember so do you know about the facts regarding this g20 facts regarding g20 So Kavi is saying that, ma'am, yesterday I have wrote non Madhu, uh, non Mudhal one scheme exam, ma'am. Most of the question from what you have taught me, ma'am. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for Kavi. So say congratulations for Kavi. I too wrote the exam, ma'am. I too felt the same. Thank you, Priyas. Thank you so much. I am trying to cover almost all the current affairs, which is useful for UPSC and even state service public examinations and even other examinations also. I also written the exam, ma'am. I will share the question paper PDF. Okay, Dwarka. If it is, if my analysis is, is helping for you, and I will be the most happiest person. Okay. the talking about i think state examination hai na yes tell me do you know facts regarding this g20 or shall we go from basics because already we are studying this topic from last one in one week i think so Okay, so this is scholarship exam for UPSC aspirants. It seems, है ना? Okay, so it is twelve members. Sorry, twenty members are there in this G twenty grouping, and in this twenty members we have nineteen countries, and we have one organization like European Union, and we are going to see this African Union will be the member soon. So here we have to see highlights, right? Ma'am, talking to me. Give me ma'am number. Samir, you can talk me on this number eight zero seven four seven six double five one three. You can make a note of this number. So here you have to see these things which are important from UPSC prelims and mains. That is, you have to see the facts. And why facts? Because especially you have to see members because there's expansion of this G20 that is African Union is going to be added, so there might be chance of getting question. And from mains point of view, you have to see what are the highlights of this year summit, 
and you have to see what is the role played by India because India is enjoying membership uh, that is presidentship. And this one is what are the challenges of this G20? Is it clear? And now let us see the detailed analysis of this topic from our notes. So if you want to get this notes PDF, you can get uh, that notes from Telegram channel. So if you're not part of Telegram channel, you can join that. The link is given in description box. And this topic is important from your international relations point of view, which comes under your GS paper too. And this topic is important from both your prelims and mains perspective. So many students think that international relations is only from mains point of view. But many students are missing this point. In prelims, you have syllabus like current issues. Current issues of national and international importance. So from that point of view, you can get questions regarding this international relations. Okay, Hina, no problem. So if you see context here, New Delhi Declaration, African Union membership, they are one of the high points of this event. So in this summit, there are two important points. The first one is New Delhi Declaration. Second one is African Union membership. And in this summit here, the next presidency ship, it is going to be enjoyed by Brazil. So that what happened, our uh, prime minister, he handed over ceremonial gravel to president of Brazil. Okay. So this is the one important thing. Ma'am studies yesterday in one article page. In that article, India going to get permanent seat in in UNSC member is it true so actually one important interest of India to add this African Union is to make the voice of global south to be heard okay it is talking about developed uh, sorry global south so why India is supporting African Union membership because so global south voice should be heard so, which are the countries part of this global south? So, we have developing countries and also less developed countries. They are part of this global south. And even one more thing here is, so we have a lot of vote count of this African Union in United Nations Security Council. And India wants to get permanent membership. India wants to get permanent membership in this United Nations Security Council. So because of this, India is supporting African Union to get membership in this G20. Okay. If you see some highlights of this meet, the first one is that they talked about Russia-Ukraine issue. And under this Russia-Ukraine issue, all states must act inconsistent with our United Nations. So United Nations Charter. So we have to follow this united nation charter and in this meet they also said that there should be no threat because of use of force to seek territorial acquisition against territorial integrity that means every country they will focus on maintaining of territorial integrity and sovereignty so if any other country which is attacking that country means that will be affecting territorial integrity and sovereignty of that country right so it should not be done so this is the thing which mainly said and if you move on, this meet also said about there should be no use of nuclear weapons. And if there are any conflicts between the nations, so we can go for peaceful resolution of conflicts. That can be, that can be done by diplomacy or any dialogue between the countries. Okay, Dwaraka, she asked a question. What is the difference between state and nation? as per polity perspective ma'am okay very good question so this type of questions you can get in even interview so i will be addressing this question of Dwaraka in our today's live session live doubt clearing session okay and next important one here it is regarding on grain or food energy security so here regarding this food security and energy security why there is a discussion because of again reason here is russia ukraine conflict 
Why? Because Russia and Ukraine, they are called as bread baskets. Especially European nations, they depend on this Russia and Ukraine for energy. Energy means they will depend upon gas and as well as oil from Russia. And these European countries, they will be also dependent on this Russia and Ukraine for their food security. So they will be getting grains, food grains. So what happened because of this Russia-Ukraine conflict, Russia occupied some important cities of Ukraine and even there is a stall of exports from Ukraine. So because of this, the countries which depend on this Russia-Ukraine for their energy security and food security, they are suffering now. So because of this, they also talked about this and they said that they should be immediate. There should be immediate deliveries of grains, food stuff, fertilizers and inputs from Russia and Ukraine. Because if there is no food exports from Russia and Ukraine, that will be affecting food security. So if food security is affecting means that will be affecting entire economy of that country because that will lead to increasing of hunger, increasing of uh, malnutrition, right? So because of this, what happened? That will be having impact. So they are also talking about this grains, food and as well as energy security. And even international market also, because of less supply of food grains, so the prices of this food grains will be also very high. So that here it will not be accessible and affordable for all. So this will be also one important issue. And this one is they also had a talk on financial markets and economies. So here in this summit, leaders they said that we need to focus on equitable growth and even we have to enhance macroeconomic and financial stability because especially due to this COVID-19 almost all countries economies have been devastated and because of China's BRI Belt and Road Initiative also many countries they went into debt trap for example Sri Lanka and if you see India and its neighborhood Sri Lanka Pakistan they are facing economic instability so because of this they also had a talk on this also And this one is endorsed financial stability boards, high level recommendations for regulation, supervision and oversight of cryptocurrencies and activities. So now what happened? Suddenly the value of these cryptocurrencies had been fall down, right? So because of this, many agencies, many companies, they went into losses. So for this also, we have to come up with a solution because even India, RBI, Central Government of, uh, sorry, Central Bank of India, Central Bank of India, that is RBI, also came up with this CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency. But it is not exactly cryptocurrency, but it is a digital currency. So because of this, what might the challenges that we are going to face regarding this digital currency? Okay, so those issues should be resolved because almost all countries, they came up with their special laws to control the digital currencies, but India did not. So because of this, yes, we need collaboration. Okay, Mahesh. Okay, very good. And next one is about climate change. So as you know that we are facing vagaries of climate change, increasing of heat, heat wave condition. And recently one article we studied that in Iran, so there is very, in, very much increasing of temperature. Heat index had been reached to 70. And especially European countries are also face, uh, facing this increased heat, heat waves and wildfires and melting of glaciers, increasing of sea level rise, cloud burst. So because of climate change, we are facing a lot of events. So because of this, it is not the game of one country to come up with actions. All countries, they have to take efforts to control this climate change, to decrease global, uh, that is greenhouse gas emissions, global warming, etc. So this is also one important thing they had talked. That is Morocco Kavya. So please check the spelling. No, Hena, yesterday we didn't conduct main translating class. And next one here is 
will pursue and encourage efforts to triple renewable energy capacity. So if you want to decrease this climate change or if you want to decrease this greenhouse emissions, so we can move towards renewable energy sources. So that is also one thing which mainly talked in the summit. Okay, that's it. And next one, it is about global debt vulnerabilities. So as I said, number of countries, they went into debt trap, for example, Sri Lanka and Pakistan and even Ethiopia and several African countries. So they also talked about this, like how these countries, they can come out. And regarding health also, we are talking about improving of global health architecture because, because of this COVID-19, we came to know that what are the loopholes that are present in our healthcare infrastructure, right? So because of this, yes, there is a need to improve our global health resilience system. It is Delhi Declaration Wiki. Okay, and this is the main question for you. Global task of G20 presidency turns towards India's stable. Discuss India's role as a leader of global south. So I said no, this type of questions will appear like what is the role of India. So try to write answer for this question. So if you want, you can make a screenshot. And let me know how can you write answer for this question. So what will be the structure? I, B, C format. Tell me. Fast. Okay, so what will you write, Hena, in introduction, body, and conclusion? Intro about India's G20 presidency. Okay, very good. Persevaka Kutumbakam is nothing but uh, whole world is a one family. About G20 summit, okay, Kavi and uh, Pinky, Satya. Okay, you can write that also, Dwaraka. Yes, you can write Kavya. Yes, you can write Charan. And body? Body, India's presidency and how it managed and to lead the country's conclusion effect of G20. Okay, very good, Sukanya. Next. Body is about how it addresses development of global south. Okay. Very good, Aditya. So what is the keyword? Keyword here is discuss. That means whatever you want to write, you can write. Either challenges, positives, negatives. So what are the steps taken by India? So why India is proposing a, a membership for I, African Union? Everything that you can write. Okay. Okay, Dwaraka. Pranesh is uh, example Pakistan economic instability election commission tool that money to conduct elections war situation Pakistan okay Pranesh you said that you will be contacting me right so Kanya how smoothly India managed to overcome these problems like Delhi declaration yes very good so Kanya okay try to write answer for this question okay Stravani very good Ma'am, way forward, we can write about Brazil like suggestions. Yes, you can write suggestions because it is current affairs based question. Yes, very good. So let us move on. Let us see next topic. So next topic it is about stock taking calamity. World needs genuine breakthrough in climate talks. So actually this topic is also related to G20, G20 regarding actions to be taken to arrest climate change. 
So this topic is important from international relation and even from your environment and ecology. So here you have to understand what are the climate change events that you are facing now. So please tell me what are the devastating events that you are facing now. Events because of climate change. Floods. Global warming. So because of global warming, what happened? That will lead to increasing of temperature. Increasing of temperature leads to increasing of demand for electricity. Because we will be using AC, coolers, etc. Increase in demand for electricity. And if there is increase in demand, actually which type of energy that we are using? We are using non-renewable resources. For example, we are burning coal and we are getting thermal energy. That will further leads to global warming. So this is a vicious cycle. Yes, tell me landslides. And next one is, I got one good point. Yes, unseasonal rainfall, food security. Food security is affected because of unseasonal rainfall. Melting of glaciers. So melting of glaciers leads to increasing of sea level rise. It will be having impacts both on humans and as well as biodiversity. We discussed yesterday's topic like how biodiversity is adapting because of increasing of sea level. Yes, very good. Urban heat island. So what is urban heat island? Anyone can tell me this concept? But this urban heat island is a concept because of increasing of urbanization, increasing of concern, concrete structures, but it will not come under this directly event under this climate change. So we can eliminate this. Yes, Arctic and Antarctic sea melt, terrorism, trade and conflicts. How? Manya, can you explain this? Affecting life cycle of species is very good. Cloudburst. Heat domes, very good. Urban floods. Unemployment, migration, yes, very good. I am getting very good, very good points. Yes, my students are rocking today. Vicious cycle means it will be happening. Always. Yes, groundwater depletion is also one important thing. Changes in seasons and monsoon. Yes, very good. If you want, you can also make this points. Desertification, very good. Food scarcity. Poverty will increase. Migration will happen. Endangered to flora and fauna. Spreading of diseases. New diseases will also come into picture. Yes, floods will cause diseases like communicable diseases. Okay, so very good points, very good points students. So here first we have to see this events. So if you are getting like five to six events, then you have to see what are the measures can be taken. Correct? So let me know what are the measures can be taken. Yes, tell me what are the measures can be taken. Yes, reduce using of fossil fuels so that what happens we can decrease emissions of greenhouse gases further that will lead to decreasing of global warming. We can go for afforestation also so that we can increase carbon dioxide absorption or we can increase carbon sinks. We can move towards use of renewable energy. Next. So we can promote green fuels. Next. 
ये स्ट्रिंजेंट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ लॉस और स्ट्रिक्ट इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट रिलेटेड लॉस नेक्स्ट Yes, we can use eco-friendly measures and whatever the things that we are doing. So that should be sustainable in manner. Yes, what is this Miyawaki method? Already question appeared. So we can use this Miyawaki method. So what is this Miyawaki method? So it is a afforestation method. Yes, it is regarding urban forestry. So, from which country we took this Miyawaki method? Yes, it is regarding urban forestry, but from which country we adopted this? Yes, very good, Sukanya. It is from Japan. Sukanya Kritika. Yes, Saidulu legend. Very good. So, these are the measures. And one more thing you have to see. What are the measures that already taken at the global level? And next one is you have to see the measures taken from India. So from India, what measures we already took? And from globally, what measures countries they together they took? So these are the very, very important things that you have to remember. So now let us see the detailed analysis of this topic. So please be focused because you can get this type of questions in your mains directly. So in this G20 summit, they talked about this climate change. So before this G20 summit itself, one report released that is United Nations Global Stock Take. Okay, United Nations Global Stock Take came up with a report and this report released even before this G20 sum summit. Okay, and it said that major economies in the world, even what happened, they are taking steps, but those steps are not enough to control this climate change. So this is the highlight of this report. So here you have to focus on what is the meaning of this global stock take. So this is important from your prelims. And this stock take it is to serve template to guide discussion leading of this 28th conference of parties. So as you recently in November 26th the COP had happened in 2021. And in 2022, we have 27th COP. And now in this November, upcoming November, we will be having 28th COP. So whenever we are having this conference of parties, whenever countries are coming and participating here, so first they have to know what are the challenges. So one, and they need to have the data. So that data will be provided by this stock aid. Okay. This is uh, provided by this stock take. And this will be acting as a template and it will be giving information regarding the discussion okay and even we have united nation convention on climate change so here uncc so it agreed that we are going to decrease decrease global warming by 2 degrees centigrade or 1.5 degrees centigrade to pre-industrial level that is 1990s so this is the thing which mainly said in our paris climate deal in 2015 but this deal has not been achieved so we have not achieved this target of decreasing of decreasing of climate change and this report which also says that so countries are taking some steps they are not idle but even though what are the steps they are taken so they have to take much more steps they have to come with increasing of their action and it also said that we have to reduce our global greenhouse emissions by 43 percentage in 2030 and by 60 percentage by 2035 then only we can achieve the target of carbon neutrality so what is this carbon neutrality yes pranesh uh Japan released radioactive water, that is not exactly radioactive water, but the water stuck in this uh, Fukushima nuclear plant, so that water released into the Pacific Ocean. So because of that action did by Japan, so China banned import of fishes from this uh, Pacific Ocean itself. Yes, what is this uh, carbon neutrality 
I already explained yes of course because uh, why because Pranesh it is uh, every country will be focusing on development so every country want uh, to be the biggest economy or the largest economy and they want to focus on their developed countries so for that they will be doing some actions so, so without manufacturing sector or without industries or industrialization we can't say the country is developed so because of that yes they are releasing emissions I hope you understand now Carbon neutrality is nothing but the balance between emitting of carbon and absorbing of carbon. Yes, very good legend. So it is not about reducing the carbon content, Mohan Krishnan. Okay. So absorption is equal to releasing. Very good, Santoy. Okay. So here, if you want to achieve this target of net zero or carbon neutrality, so we have to reduce the global greenhouse gas emissions by 43 percentage that too by 2030 target year and next one here is 60 percentage by 2035 so this is the highlight which is given by this report and this report also says that g20 countries account for 93 percentage of operating coal power plants that means thermal power plants 93 percentage of energy from these countries for these countries they are getting from this thermal power plants and we and 88 percentage of prospective ones and the g20 leaders they came with a declaration that they are going to fund okay for example developed countries they are going to fund these developing countries and less developed countries to move towards renewable energy sources okay this will be helpful for achieving of carbon neutrality so as i said this global stock take is very important so here global stock take is nothing but it is a five yearly review of impact of climate change action undertaken by the countries yes we do have five year plans right earlier but this five year plans or planning commission which has been replaced by niti ayog now so now we have niti ayog so but what is the important aim of this planning commission for example so they will be come up with challenges and based on that challenges they will be coming up with a plan and they will say that within this five years so we have to do these things and after end of this five years so they will be coming up with uh, anal analyzing or monitoring that what are the things they uh, did so whether the things which had been fulfilled or not so in the same way regarding this climate change also yes we are facing lot of challenges so we are coming up with a plan and we are monitoring that so that is called as global stock take okay is it clear so this is this global stock take so global stock take refers to the proposed five yearly review of impact of climate change action which is undertaken by the countries and under this paris agreement or paris climate deal which we came up in year 2015 it said that each country has to present a climate action plan every five years and under this paris agreement the first global stock take will happen in 2023 and it will be helpful for the world to determine whether it needs to do more or how much more okay so this is the some important thing that you have to remember yes india will have a satellite to observe climate change yes this is the thing that said in yesterday's article that is G20 satellite. Okay, Satya. So this is about this topic. And next topic it is about abyss, the abyss of religious extremism. So here you have to focus on this keyword religious extremism. So do you know what is the meaning of religious extremism? I think this article is talking about issue in Pakistan that is issue between Christians and Muslims of Pakistan but we are not going to see from that point of view from UPSC point of view we are going to see what exactly is this religious extremism and whether such type of incidents happen in India or not if yes what are the examples. Uh, 
Okay, Dwaraka, you asked one question. This question is also very interesting. Ma'am, if government increases the petrol or diesel price, why people are against it? It can be a measure to reduce fossil fuel usage. Yes. Yes, Dwaraka, you asked a very good question. So, but what is the alternative for this fossil fuels now? So, whether we can use electric vehicles? So, if you are using electric vehicle, suddenly what happens if you are taking electric vehicle on road, for example, two-wheeler, suddenly blast is happening, no. So, how can you ensure safety of yourself? You can't. And even one more important concept which is present here is, whenever there is increasing of petrol and diesel cost, it will be affecting transportation. So whenever there is increased cost of this petrol and diesel, automatically transportation cost will be increased. So whenever this transportation cost is increased, overall price of goods and services will be increased in market. For example, earlier you will be getting one good for 10 rupees, for example, rupees 10. But the same good now after increasing of this petrol and diesel price, it will be available to you for rupees 20. So whenever price is increasing, what happens to so people, they will be not interested sometimes. Sometimes they have to buy that. But sometimes what happens, there will be decreased demand. So whenever there is decreased demand, ultimately the producer will be get affected, right? Because of decreasing demand, he will be entered into losses. Is it clear? So because of increasing of petrol and diesel prices, ultimately that will lead to increasing of price of goods and services in market. That will lead to inflation. So because of inflation, it will be affecting purchasing power of the people. Is it clear, Dwarka? Yes, one religion dominated others. Very good. So I can't say my UPSC journey here, Vaishnavi. This is not right platform. Also, poor people, they cannot offer. Yes, very good, Kritika. Okay, one more question here is, we should use common transport can reduce fuel price. So actually the issue here is, government used to provide a less, uh, government will be imposing less taxes on diesel. So we have petrol and diesel. So if you go to any petrol bank, you will be getting petrol and diesel. Actually government will be imposing less tax on this diesel and high tax on this petrol. So because of this normally petrol cost per liter will be high compared to the diesel. So do you know this? My name is Usha. Okay. So here normally petrol cost is high compared to the diesel. I know, I think you know about this. Why? Because government will be imposing high tax on this petrol and low tax on this diesel. Why low tax on this diesel? Because so diesel will be used in mostly big vehicles like trucks, lorries, etc. So these trucks and lorries will be used for the transport of goods and services. So government's aim it is to reduce the price, okay, to maintain the price in the market at least. And normally why there is a high tax on this petrol because, because petrol comes under luxury goods. But what is the issue here is normally even if you see four wheelers like different cars, different SUVs, sedan model cars, etc. Different companies. So they came with manufacturing of these four wheelers with this diesel engines. So what happened? Now this luxury goods like Benz like that, they are also using this diesel. So because of this, what happened? So petrol manufactured cars had been decreased earlier. So now government came with a step that so whenever you are manufacturing these four wheelers 
you have to come up with only petrol vehicles not diesel vehicles so because of this now if you want to buy a car you will be getting petrol vehicle but not diesel vehicle especially four wheelers like cars is it clear So you are not going to talk any political issues Ajay here. So shall we move on? It's already late. I am diverting a lot today from the topics. So religious extremism is nothing but it includes any kind of behavior, attitude or belief outside the norm of religious belief. So whenever we are having any religious belief but we are doing action which is against that. Okay that is called as religious extremism for example if you go to temple you will be lighting up diyas so if you are putting off that diya that comes into religious extremism right so your sacred book is for example so and so book but if you are going for tearing of that book that will leads to the affecting the sentiments of another religion that is called as religious extremism and if you see here in India also, number of times this religious extremism events that happened and you have to remember that events. So first one is 1992 Babri Masjid demolition and Ayodhya case. Next one is 1993 Bombay bombings, 2019 Easter attacks in Colombo and even number of times this type of events they can be also seen in Pakistan. Okay, so these are some recent past decade or other examples regarding this religious extremism and there is a chance of getting question in this year mains regarding this religious extremism. So please do follow. And what can be done to stop this type of religious hatredness? So first one is because of recent rise of Talibans in Afghanistan, so that led to one important issue. Yes, you can write that also, Kavya, in Telangana Masjid. Okay, so because of rise of Taliban in Afghanistan, it is a wake-up call to South Asia's political leadership to form a united front against all form of religious dogma and extremism. So what happened after this Taliban, they came into power in Afghanistan. So here all the countries, they came together and they talked that, yes, there might be the rise of this religious extremism events. So, so we have to come up with some steps. And South Asian political leaders, they also came up with a clear vision and courage to stand together to send an unequivocal voice of zero tolerance. So South Asian countries have said that we are not going to tolerate this type of issues, but always this type of issues will be going on. So even the number of steps taken, so this issue will be going on. I will be telling you Pranesh. Yes, politicians itself they will be talking about these religious things. How can a normal people can control that religious extremism? It can't be done, right? And next one is religious becomes one important tool for achieving political mileage. So whenever any political person who is talking about religion, that will be spreading like a wildfires. So first of all, we can we need to control these politicians. We need to eliminate this vote bank politics. And next one here is we have to take help of social media platforms so that people they have easy access to information regarding this religious extremism. And South Asian nations, they should continue to extend full potential liberties to all the people regardless of religion, ethnicity, language and nation. So we should not take into account ethnicity. There should not be any discrimination based on religion, race, caste, etc. So that to some extent we can decrease this religious extremism. Okay, Kavya. <laughs> yes, you can add these measures, of course, Sukanya. Is it clear? Shall we move on? Are you getting bored? Are you thinking that I am discussing some irrelevant things? 
rather than discussing today's current affairs. Okay, let us move on. And I will be showing you the PDF of uh, today's Hindu newspaper at last because I am already running out of time. And next topic is redouble efforts to reduce disaster risk. So actually across the world we are facing disasters. Right? Not only in India. So in India we face it uh, like tsunamis. So not tsunamis, cyclones which are affecting east coast and west coast, earthquake, floods, unseasonal rainfall, droughts, cloud burst, landslides, mudslides etc so recently you can also add example of earthquake of morocco right wildfires heat waves okay so we are facing a lot of the things so we need a good disaster resilient infrastructure so this is the idea of this article so how can we reduce this uh, disasters at least three to four measures can you tell me fast Yes, floods in Himachal Pradesh, thinking of Joshimath, very good. Yes, tell me the measures, how can we decrease these disasters in India? Yes, we can focus on early warning, disaster surveillance, next. Yes, changes in engineering structures, very good, Kritika. Yes, we can reduce mining, Sathya or Sukanya. Use of biofuels, okay, Satya. Alert using technology, very good, Shakti. Environmental loss, we can follow, very good, Kavya. Avoid plastic, okay, somewhat, to some extent. Proper infrastructure, very good, Giri, Giridara. Reducing urbanization, very good. Recycling. Plantation more, very good, Jagan. That is early warning system, Srujana. Proper approval, that means environment impact assessment, Srinivasan. Yes, very good, Shravani. So these are the some steps already we have to take. So already I got, I got answer from you. So let us see fastly what is this article talking about. So this article it is saying that G20 and disaster risk reduction so recently here before this G20 summit we have this disaster risk uh, summit of this G20 that is about G20 disaster risk resilience working group. So they mainly came up with meeting and they said that we need to have increased finance and we need to take uh, steps to control these disasters. So there are five important priorities under this group. The first one is they focused on early warning system. We need this. And next one is we need to focus on infrastructure that should be disaster resilient. And we need finance to move towards transition. And we have to strengthen our national global disaster response system. And we have to focus on ecosystem based approaches. So these are the five important things which mainly focused by this grouping. And the key strategies for reducing of risk for the first one is we have to focus on better economic and urban development. That means whenever we are focusing on economy, so we are focusing on development. So development will be having negative impact on environment and ecology, right? So we have to have a good balance between them. So here we have to reduce vulnerability and exposure to risk. Okay, so how can we reduce this risk? That means we have to take some measures like better economic and urban development choices, practices. We have to focus on protection of environment and reduction of poverty, inequality, etc. So in this way, we can have better economic and urban development. Okay. And next one is financing is very important, especially developed countries. They have to finance these developing countries and less developed countries. So that these countries, they can go for building of infrastructure. And this one is innovative financing tools, including creating reserve funds 
and we have to come up with dedicated lines of credit that means credit should be uh, got by these countries from the developed countries and next one is we have to focus on infrastructure and that infrastructure should be resilient to disasters okay and even we can focus on training even we can focus on training of local communities and even we can take help of local communities when you are coming up with plans because local communities they are well known about the topography of that area okay we can use increased technology we can go for survey before construction okay legend is it clear so here you have to see what are the initiatives that we had taken at the global level and at india level so in the global level we have sindai framework for disaster risk reduction and you have to by heart the sindai framework for sure because in your disaster management which comes in the gs paper 3 so whenever you are writing about the measures so you have to write this to sindai framework okay it's clear so srinivasan has a doubt they are not even sharing their technologies to developing countries ma'am like us did in the case of extracting shale gas initiative of india yes of course yes very good shravani and gurupit we can use this information communication technology also and next one is the climate risk and early warning system we can use that is the one of the global initiative international day for disaster risk reduction so that we can improve awareness that is celebrated on october 13th every day sorry every year and next one is a green climate fund sectoral guide on climate information and early warning system so these are the four initiatives that we took at the global level so that you can remember for sure so you have to take a screenshot of this and from india point of view india came with coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure society and even we have national disaster management plan so these two are from india point of view and these four are from global okay is it clear thank you so much gurupreet yes let us move on i want to give you one main question that is discuss the recent measures initiated in disaster management by government of india departing from the earlier reactive approach yes tell me what are the measures taken by india that you have to write that's it so how many of you are going to write answer for this question Okay, try to write answer for this question. And here there is one prelims question is for you. Solve this question. So, in which one of the following groups are all the four countries or members of G20? So, I will be waiting for your answer. And let me see who will be going to give the first correct answer. Charan A. we know the b aditya a chandru d surya a sanatosh d sujana a kavya c so you can post answer in comment box chicken d faisal c satya b a r t shrinivasan a fast kritika a babji a basvaraj a saidulu b sukanya a sakti d fast you can try no mahesh a pinki a vinay a jitendra a knowledge pala a bhargavi a 
I think Bhargavi you said that you will be contacting me but not yet contacted. So uh, you can contact me after once the class is completed. Stravani A, Legend A. Okay, the correct answer for this question is A and most of the students they gave me answer A. So students who went wrong, so please do remember the members of this G20 for sure. And the first correct answer is by Charan. Congratulations, Charan. Okay, let us move on. And next topic it is about on the crime of false promise to marry. So actually, the problem here is, especially in these teenage uh, students or teenage or adolescent age people. So normally in this age, what happened? Infatuations will be there. And... Two persons they will be come together and because of this what happens sometimes there will be consensual sex happens between them and they will say that yes because of the false promise of getting married so they will be coming for this physical relations but after after that what happened so there will be no marriage so this events or this type of crimes are not included in our IPC. So because of this, we are coming up with abolishing of IBC and we are coming up with this new thing, okay, new bill. So in that, so this crime has been included. Okay, so that is the idea of this article. So here this article says that if a false promise to marry a woman but never intends to do the marriage. Because of that, what happens sometimes? Consensual sex which happens. And this consensual sex which comes under criminal offence under section 69 of IPC. So not IPC. In IPC so this is not there. But in this Bharati and Nyaya Sanhita. So in this BNS. So this is included as a offence under 69. Section 69. Because it is a type of offence which is normally seen. So you may ask one question like, ma'am, these are the not the new type of cases. Earlier also there are a number of times so this type of case has been filed. But if there is no provision of punishment in this IPC, so how they are punished? So I think this is your doubt, right? So because of this, what happened? So under some criminal laws, till now this type of cases were taken. But because of changing of uh, technology, because of increasing of technology, because of coming up of new type of crimes, yes, we need to update our laws. Okay. So because of this, so this BNS, which is talking about this section 69, which talks about this type of offenses regarding consensual sex on false promise of marriage. Is it clear? Yes, it is because of lack of awareness. Even technology is also one important reason here because of increasing of social media platforms like Facebook. So number of times matches will be coming and matches will be broken. No, even this bill has not been passed. Legend says, ma'am, this protection only for female in false marriage case. Yes, as of now, it is for only female. Not included in Gazette, it is, has not been passed. It is even at a bill stage. Okay, so these are the things which are given in this article. So that's it. Okay, section 69 creates two violations. So it is talking about two important things. So first one is decideful means that means only by this false promise to marry uh, false promise of employment or promotion there is inducement or marrying after suppressing identity okay so because uh, some people they'll be saying that i'm going to provide employment for you i'm going to provide promotion and in that case also sometimes consensual sex happens so because of this there will be exploiting of women there is no exploitation of women anywhere. So, because of this, uh, yes, we have this thing. All men are mostly helpless, ma'am. It is not like that, Srinivasan. Thank you.
थैंक यू सो मच गुरुप्रीत एंड वाई वी नीड दिस टाइप ऑफ लॉस बिकॉज इन टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन ए क्वार्टर ऑफ टोटल रेप केसेस रजिस्टर्ड इन डेल्ही दे आर रिलेटेड टू सेक्स अंडर फॉल्स प्रॉमिस ऑफ मैरिज एज पर डेल्ही पोलिस सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस येस वी नीड टू इंक्लूड दिस टाइप ऑफ पनिशमेंट इन द न्यू बिल एंड दिस वन इज नेशनल क्राइम्स रिकॉर्ड ब्यूरो इन द सेम इयर रिकॉर्डेड टेन थाउजेंड सिक्सटी एट सिमिलर केस ऑफ रेप बाय नोन पर्सन ऑन प्रॉमिस टू मैरिज द विक्टिम सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस ओनली okay so this is about this topic and as usual i have to show this that is daily mains answering course for beginners and the class will be taken by me so here we are covering entire your gs syllabus and daily one answer you will be writing so that it will be helpful to get habituated to write answers so that you can lose your fear and you can you can improve your answer writing skills and there will be live classes that will be taken by by me obviously so try to join this course it is very helpful and now let us see our newspaper so the first topic i discussed and the most of the articles are not much important and mostly i saw there are uh, political related articles in our today's newspaper in states page so here you can see one article that is declare calamity in himachal as national disaster cm urges prime minister so what happened in himachal pradesh recently heavy rain happened so because of this heavy rain it got uh, devastated floods in himachal pradesh so because of this our prime minister he say uh, uh, chief minister of this himachal pradesh he says that we have to declare this as a calamity so that here himachal pradesh can gets funds from the center okay and if you move on so in this editorial page there is an article regarding larger project of subverting the idea of india so this article it is talking about simultaneous elections or one nation one election so i already discussed this topic and i discussed this topic regarding stock taking calamity that is g20 and climate change and this topic is not much important and next one is the religious extremism i discussed this topic and opinion page i discussed about this disaster risk topic and here in this data point you can see this article that is housewives make up over 50 percentage of india's female suicides so not only farmer suicides are increasing day by day but even housewife suicides are also increasing so here you have to see like what are the reasons for the increasing of suicides in housewives ma'am course is completed in how much time one year or else if you want to complete in 6 months you can also complete it in 6 months okay so if you want to complete in 6 months you can complete or else if you want to do for one year you can do for one year so you have to see they are facing abuse and there is limited freedom for housewives dowry problems domestic violence so these are the important reasons for increasing of deaths in or suicides in this housewives and if you move on so japan keen to deepen defense ties with india says kishida so here we have to see india and japan relations and in this text and context i discuss this topic of crime especially disaster affected areas women face more stress because they collect food resources especially in rural areas okay so even this disaster really affected areas women are also going for sexual exploitation also and if you move on in this news page also there is nothing much important here you can see poisoning may have led to death of tigers in nilgiris so here you have to see this nilagiri where they are located so nilagiri is located where this eastern ghats and western ghats are meeting so here you have to see in which states this nilagiri is or extended okay that's it and if you move on 
Here you can see this article is important that is apple country gets ground ready for cannabis cultivation. So cannabis actually it comes in the drugs but even it comes into this drug category so it is having some medicinal value right so because of that we are going for cultivation of this uh, cannabis and please let me know which states already got permission for the cultivation of cannabis. Okay, so these are some important articles that appear in our today's newspaper. Okay, and I want to show one important thing. One minute. So if you want to purchase courses in the other science academy, we are providing foundation course and we are providing the courses of different subjects. And if you want to purchase this main answer writing, so you can come here and you can see this is the daily main answer writing course and you can join here. And even we are going to start this prelims test series soon. I think most probably from next Sunday this uh, prelims test series is going to be started. So if you want you can take and the price is also very limited, it is just 3000 rupees. And main answer writing is 8200 rupees. And for entire foundation with 2 years validity it is just 45000 rupees. Okay, it will be very very helpful and you can join these courses and if you want to talk to me directly regarding these courses you can call me on this number 8074765513 okay and today at 8 pm we are going to have live doubt clearing session so you can also attend that session so thank you so much for attending this session and if you really like this video or like this session hit the like button so please don't leave without hitting the like button and do share this session to others also like on whatsapp groups or telegram groups and one more thing is if you are visiting Rathor Science for the first time so please do subscribe thank you so much for attending this session and we are going to meet in the next class